Hello everybody, I want to welcome you guys back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about async await as well as debugging with the uh, React Native and the iPhone. So I got my app running here in my iPhone 6 simulator and I have this JSON placeholder site that you can easily call a REST call just for some fake JSON data just to make sure everything's working correctly. If you scroll down this JSON data uh, site here, you'll see that there's this uh, example of an AJAX call. The root is this URL right here, and then what they're doing is concatenating the root to slash post slash one. So we're going to take that URL, and I have my app.js fi file open here, and there's a default class that's put together when you run your project, or you get it, your project built. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a URL on here, and uh, I'm just going to set it equal to the URL that we get out of here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'm going to get the first post. Nothing special here. So forward slash posts. Make sure we only have one slash here. Um, so we got the URL here and you notice how like when I save it, it refreshes which is really nice. Now with uh, the simulator, if you don't have any debugger open, it's really easy. You can do command D. Um, I believe it's DD for Android if I'm not mistaken. You can hit D twice real quick. But then you scroll down here, you can see debug remote JS. So click on that and it should open up a new tab in your browser, which will be your debugger. Now it says uh, press command shift J to open up developer tools or command option. That's command option J. Uh, so we'll go ahead and open that up. Command option J. I have it broken out into its new window. You can click on this and you can either uh, attach it to the screen. You can detach it. I like it detached personally. That way I can have different windows open. I don't have to see exactly what's going on there. So anyway, I have my debugger open. Um, you can see a lot of stuff. You can clear out really easy like that. So what we're going to do is going to start doing this async await function. And the way this works, we're just going to do a constructor function. Constructor. And every time you call a constructor, you have to call super as well. Now there's other methods in here that come default with React Native, like component did mount and component will mount. But I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go into that stuff right now. For now, we're just going to use our constructor. And in this constructor, we're going to call this at get data. We haven't created our method yet for get data. So that's going to be our async method. And you'll probably see an error show up in our simulator. So we're going to do uh, async. We have to define that the function is async. And then we're going to call it get data. And then what we're going to do is let, we're going to call data equals uh, fetch. Fetch is uh, built in. It's global. You can just call it. You don't have to uh, import anything, which is nice. And we'll just do this at URL. And then we're going to do let body. Sorry, we got to do let await fetch. Let body equals await data dot JSON. So this will give us our data here. Um, and so basically what we're doing is both of these are asynchronous methods here. And so we have to call await before the asynchronous method fires. And that'll actually fire everything. It'll wait. It'll basically stop the JavaScript engine, wait for the data to come back or whatever comes back. And then we're going to store it in a variable. And then here, this JSON method is also asynchronous, even though it's not going out to fetch anything. It's an asynchronous method. Um, instead of doing a callback or uh, some kind of promise, we're just going to do the await method again and then store that in our body. Now, it's important to understand here, when you're doing asynchronous, uh, async await, it, everything has to be done within the async method. So you might see online where it says return body. Now the problem is, if I say let data equals that, and I'm expecting the body to come back, you're going to quickly see that this returns a promise and not actually the data. So we'll go ahead and uh, just save that, it'll refresh. And we'll open up a terminal here, and we'll see it come back. So you see that as a promise here. So that's not good. That's not what we're looking for. Now the data is, the body here is not actually a promise. So if we console.log their body, we save that. We're going to see that show up in our debugger here. So you see that we got an object. It has a body, an ID, a title, and a user ID. It's just a bunch of filler text. Um, so you can see that our body is actually the data 
However, when you return it, because the constructor is not as asynchronous, it's not going to uh, be able to handle it correctly as far as waiting. So we don't need to assign it to data. What we want to do is just utilize the body, whatever we're going to do with this data, use it right here. Uh, just actually what we're going to do is set it on the state. So I'm going to make a state here and equals an object. Now what I'm going to do is call this um, post. And post is an object and post has a title of cool post. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put I'm going to print this out in the page here. So I'm going to clear out a lot of this stuff. So the way we print this out, we say this.state.post.title. And we'll save that. You'll see it update. Cool post. So we got our title printed out on our post. And what I'm going to do is instead of calling this body, I'm going to change this name to post. And so what I want to do is set the state. So this.set state will cause a full re-render of this of the screen so it, it'll update whatever it's in our state so because this is named post we can just copy that and paste it here we don't have to write key value post like that because es6 allows you to put it all as long as the key and value are the same you can just name it like that so we should see this um it should be a cool post at first or maybe not even we won't even see it it goes that fast which is really nice so you can see that our title was actually printed out from the data that came back from our REST call. So you can assign data to this, and then what we have to do is data.then, and get your data back, let's call it a post, and you do say this I said state here, and you can assign it here, and this will update as well. We just have to, instead of setting state in here, we have to return post. And so this works as well, but like I said, I'm not a big fan of everything of callback functions, so I would rather handle it all in the async function, and then instead of having to do a dot then and have a callback function in here, it gets a little messy sometimes. You want to avoid callbacks as much as possible. So it's really up to you guys how you want to structure your project, but like I said, I keep it within the uh, async method. I want to thank you guys for watching, and that concludes everything. Remember to like and subscribe. I really appreciate you guys. And hopefully you enjoy the videos. I'm going to keep pumping them out as much as possible. Thanks.